Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our second amazing session of the day. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed the previous session on the visual effects and all the inroads in This Is The Way. But another way we're going to be speaking about uh, this morning is our amazing delegation from Spain. This is Tapas of Mind. We have some amazing panelists for you with some great presentations and a wonderful round table talking about all the great things that Spain has to offer in terms of the audiovisual industry. Before we get into any of the presentations, though, I do want to bring up our panelists one at a time so that they can talk a little bit about the work that they do. And so I would like to begin this section with the uh, wonderful Teresa Ascona Alejandra, who is the vice president of the Spain Film Commission. Welcome to the show, Teresa. How are you? Uh, hello, Jose Luis. Uh, uh, good morning to you all uh, in Miami. I'm Teresa Cona. Uh, I'm pleased to be here today with you, virtually, uh, on behalf of the Spain Film Commission. I, I am now at San Sebastian International Film Festival. Um, I, I managed to be at two festivals at the same time. And, and thank you, Camacol, Patti Arias, Jose Luis, and Miami uh, Media and Film Market for organizing this, this panel. Absolutely. So yeah. other than being in beautiful film festivals like San Sebastian, uh, tell us a little bit about the work you do with the Spain Film Commission. Okay, uh, in Spain Film Commission, uh, uh, we have been working uh, since uh, uh, 2001. This year is our 20th anniversary. And all these years we have been uh, leading the way when it comes to uh, branding Spain as a destination for filmmaking and audiovisual shoots. We, we are coordinating the efforts of uh, an extensive network of uh, film commissions and film offices located across uh, the country, across Spain. Wow. Oh, that's that's amazing. And we're so excited to see more. And we're going to have an amazing show reel that we're going to show everyone uh, for all the beautiful locations and all the cinematic work that comes out of Spain, which is incredible. So thank you so much for that. Teresa, now we're going to bring in uh, from Sequoia Studios, uh, this is our good friend, Jose Manuel Gonzalez Pacheco. This is your second webinar with us. So thank you once again for being part of the virtual conference. Jose Manuel, welcome. Yes, hello. Hello, everybody. Hello, all the audience. Uh, thank you to the organizers for the invitation. Uh, well, it's, uh, as you say, my second participation here. It's a pleasure to be here with you, with the... Uh, uh, Miami Film Commission, Jose Luis Patti, Arias, and of course, we are impressed to, to be again with Teresa and Patricia in the, in the panel. And well, for presentation of Sequoia Studios, we are uh, well, a big uh, Spanish producer uh, studio. We are working on developing and producing of uh, TV careers uh, and uh, programs, and we have a uh, film area that is producing four or five uh, movies per year and also we have an interesting and uh, very promising uh, business unit dedicated to the international production services here and for all the international companies thinking um, well, and planning to be to be here to shoot uh, films and TV series in our country. Wow, amazing. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, Sequoia is doing so much work, uh, I know, in Spain and internationally as well. So we're, we would like to talk a little bit more of that work and, and what you do specifically during our roundtable. Uh, but I wanted to introduce your third uh, colleague uh, over in Spain. So we're going to bring uh, our good friend Patricia Motilla on to the broadcast now and chat with her for two minutes. Thank you so much, Jose Manuel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll see you in a couple minutes. And here is, of course, uh, the lovely uh, Patricia Motilla, who is a partner uh, with uh, Anderson, and she's also the head of culture, sports, and entertainment. So tell us a little bit more about yourself, uh, Patricia, and the work that you do with Anderson. Yeah, thank you very much, Jose Luis. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Um, well, I would like to uh, to thanks first of all, uh, Jose Luis and Patiaria for this opportunity to talk before everybody. And uh, let me to introduce myself. I'm Patricia Motilla, partner of Anderson, and head of media and entertainment area and European leader of Anderson Media Chain. Uh, 
We are lawyer is specialized in financing and tax in audiovisual projects, and we have experience for, especially I have experience for more than 50 years in this area. The team I lead is an international team and is considered a leader in the audiovisual sector, being able to offer a global advice, legal, regulatory, and in all the tax field. So I hope you're going to enjoy our words and you will find them very interesting for your business. Yes, absolutely. Yes, I think this is very interesting for uh, our business, for our American producers as well, uh, to learn more about your various tax schemes and the things that happen in Spain. So we are going to show first a showreel, as I mentioned before, with Teresa uh, uh, from the Spain Film Commission. And then after that, uh, Patricia, what we're going to do is bring you back so that you can have a short presentation uh, on what you do in terms of the tax schemes and the uh, productions of Spain. Is that okay? Perfect. Okay, so we are going to show you the now the Spain Film Commission shooting in Spain audiovisual reel. It's an incredibly viable place for, for filmmaking. It's actually really, it's been quite exciting over the last number of years to see so many incredible directors emerge from Spain. Um, and so many incredible films are being made here. Itself is so extraordinary. It feels like the crew is made up of, of not just simply people doing their job, but of filmmakers who have a genuine interest in the film we're trying to make and 
There's a, there's a sense of family and support on set that's really extraordinary. They, they have a vested interest and an ability that it goes beyond their own personal vocation. And that's kind of extraordinary. Like I said, I think that Spain has really put itself on the map and showcased itself so clearly with the films that have come out of Spain in the last five years, five, ten years. Um, you know, movies that I love and filmmakers that I've fallen in love with, and it, it kind of is continuing to occur. Um, so it's a, it's a wonderful place, I think, to make films. Wow, that was very impressive. So, Patricia, you are back. Hi. Hi. So now what we're going to do after seeing those amazing audio visuals uh, that we just witnessed from Spain is to talk to our audience about how they can create some of their own with your uh, wonderful presentation. So I'm going to switch to a full screen so everyone will be able to see your presentation and hear you as you guide them through the, uh, through the presentation, okay? So let me just go ahead and get that started. And so now everyone should be able to see uh, the presentation. And uh, Patricia, go ahead and, and take it away. Yeah, OK. Uh, I'm going to talk about shooting in Spain uh, for uh, international producers, OK? Next. Well, shooting as an American production in Spain. Next. OK. Uh, we start then. Uh, for foreign producer, there are two ways of shooting in Spain. Or as a foreign show, uh, in which case the show will have the American uh, nationality. Or uh, as an international co-production, and in this case, from the Spanish point of view, the show will, ha will have a double nationality. Next. Uh, American producer shooting in Spain a show that is considered as a foreign production may obtain tax benefits in Spain when a part of the cost of the show is incurred in Spanish territory. There are three main requirements uh, to be followed. At least you have to invest 1 million euros. The IP must be American. I mean, the IP cannot be Spanish. And the financing of the show must be a foreign financing, American, for example, not Spanish. Next. Uh, so, when uh, an American producer decides to shoot in Spain for, for the first thing he has to do is to negotiate with a Spanish service, a production service agreement, where, as I said be before, you have to establish 
that you will finance the film and that you will, the, the, that you will have the IP, the total of the IP of the film. So next. So let's see the uh, tax benefit. Let's to analyze what you can obtain if you come to shoot uh, to our country. The tax benefit to be applied will be different depending of the location of the investment. If the film is shot in Canary Island, the tax benefit is the 54% of the first million euros invested in Spain, in Canary Islands, and 45% on the excess with a cap of 12.4 million euros. Just please note that in this moment, the Canarian government is negotiating with the central government the possibility of increase this, um, this cap up to 18 million euros. On the other hand, if the film is shot in mainland territory, the tax benefit is the 30% of the first million euros of the cost and cure in Spain and the 25% of the exit with a cap of 10 million euros. Next. We have in Spain other territories in the north of Spain, that's Basque territory and Navarran territory. The main issue is in that in, if you shoot there, you will not have the opportunity of monetize the tax benefit. Uh, in Basque territory, you will have a 25 or 30 percent of tax deduction, and is the local producer who will offset this tax deduction against the future profit or benefits of uh, its company. Uh, if you go to Navarra territory, the percentage to be applied is the 35% of the deduction base that um, with a cap of 5 million euros. Next. Um, legible expenses. That's an issue quite important when you decide to come uh, to Spain and when you are looking about uh, your green light of the show. The Spanish law establishes as eligible expenses the cost and cure in creative staff and the cost and cure in technical industry or other suppliers. If we talk about uh, creative staff, they must be tax residents in Spain or in any other European economic area uh, member of the, of the state, okay? And uh, there is a cap of 100,000 euros per, per person. So these limits are very important when we do decide to, to, to do your figures in Spain. Next. Other requirements of the show is, as I said before, that you have at least invest 1 million euros in order to be qualified for the tax rebate, except if you are an animation production. In this case, uh, the amount to be invested is 200,000 euros. Another requirement is that the total cost of the production must be at least 2 million euros. Next. Okay, so other more requirements in order to qualify for the tax rebate, the Spanish tax rebate. Uh, the show must obtain the cultural test issued by the ECA, that is the Spanish Ministry of Culture. The show must include in the final 
credits a reference regarding the tax incentive applied and and that is one of the most difficult re, re, uh, requirements sometimes to follow is that the american producer must authorize the different spanish government institution to use the same promotional content that is offered to the press if all these requirements are followed uh, the show will obtain the tax credit and the cash back of this tax credit. Um, it's important to know that from an accounting point of view, this cash back will be registered in the Spanish service company as a commercial discount. That means that your cost in your account, in the American account accounting, uh, will reduce the cost, the tax rebate will reduce the total cost of the film, of the movie, of the show. Next. So, timeline. <clears throat> uh, the tax rebate is a cue in the tax period in which production in Spain territory ends. So, the production is deemed to have ended when the last expenses directly linked to the production in Spain is NQ. That means that if your last um, expenses is in the 2021, you will have the right to obtain the cash back for the fiscal tax year 2021. Okay. Uh, the local Spanish producer will apply the tax rebate in its, in its corporate income tax return, which is due the 25th of July of the next year. So you end in the 2021 and in July of, of the 25th of July of the 2022, uh, the Spanish producer will apply for the cash back and the tax authority have more or less six months to have the to, to give the money back. So that means that you will take one year or a bit more to have your cash back. So we have already negotiated with a Spanish bank the possibility of financing the amount of the cash back and to you are able to, to have this amount of money for your show at front. Okay, next. Let me just to talk to you just one slide about international co-production with a Spanish and an American producer. Next. In my first, next, okay. In my, in my first slide, I talked you have two ways of coming as a foreign producer or as an international co-producer. If you decide to come uh, with a Spanish partner, you will have an international co-production. Uh, in this sense, you will have a percentage of the film, the IP, will belong to the Spanish producer. This part of the film will benefit of the tax credit established by the Spanish law for Spanish film. And in the percentage belonging to the American um, producer, you will apply the tax rebates with what we're talking about. Well, it's, uh, we, we, we have issues to be talking for all a day about that, but I, I hope you have understand uh, with this slide the three or four ideas uh, you have to take into account when you decide if you want to come or not to shoot uh, in Spain. Okay, Jose Luis. Oh, that was incredible. Thank you so much, um, Patricia, for that wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, and I think that we were able to cover a lot of ground there, right? <laughs> <clears throat> Absolutely. So, uh, Teresa, can you hear me okay? Yes, I hear you. Perfect. 
Uh, so let's get started with some of the roundtable of this discussion, and then we'll leave a few minutes for some of the questions that have been coming in from the audience. Uh, Teresa, uh, we saw your beautiful reel. It's amazing, the audiovisual material and the content that comes out of Spain. Uh, we are, I got goosebumps. It was so powerful and beautiful, uh, <laughs> that video. Uh, and then, you know, that, so, so tell us a little bit about what, you know, in your own words, what makes Spain a unique production destination? Wow, you said it's, it's much easier to talk about my country after this video. It's really easy. I'm sure that, that uh, you must be thinking now in visiting us, uh, not only for work, but also for holidays in the future. Uh, Spain has always been a, a highly attractive country for filming, uh, from Lawrence Arabia to Dr. Sivago to Game of Thrones, and more recently, uh, Money Hist or, or The Crown. Uh, Spanish production service companies say we can replicate in Spain up to 70% of the world locations. If you travel by road, we, we can cover a wide variety of landscapes, architectures and, and cultures. Uh, Spain has traveled for Australia, Afghanistan, Italy, the Caribbean, uh, Switzerland, uh, Sevilla, and we were chosen because of our wonderful locations, hospitality, high profile, professional crews and production services and safety. And now, as Patricia has explained very well, we have really a very competitive tax rebate scheme. Yes, uh, and that, that, is, that is all true. So I, I wanna just throw it back now in terms of, uh, and again, thank you so much uh, as well, Patricia, for that lovely sort of breakdown of how you can benefit from this, but um, can you just encapsulate again for American producers, uh, what are the, the main key benefits of, of shooting in Spain from, from a tax uh, incentive perspective? Just- uh, it's, a, it's a question for, for Patricia or for me? Yes. Oh. For me? Uh, for I, me? I would say, yeah, I would say for Patricia, yeah. yes. Yeah, okay. uh, I think, yeah, I, uh, just to, to to look up the, the difference and the, the real opportunity we have in this moment of shooting in Spain, I prepare Jose Luis two examples, okay? So this is uh, the first one. Assuming uh, we're shooting in a Canary Island and assume, assuming that the cost of the, of the show is 5 million euros. Uh, as I explained before, in the first million euros, uh, we will have, uh, we will apply the percentage of the 54% uh, in the uh, um, rates in the in the base, and in the in the excess, that is the four million euros, you will have the 45% applied. That means that uh, we will have a tax credit and a cash back of 2,340,000 euros. That is quite a big amount, okay? Um, on the other hand, please, could you uh, put the, the next example, please? Uh, oh, you want me to throw the screen back up? Is that correct? Uh, no, the, yeah, the, the yeah. Okay, I, let me... Let me see what, what uh, I'm gonna throw the screen back up in one second and then uh, you tell me which slide you want me to go to, okay? Yeah, the the two example, uh, this one, no, Canary Island, not the other one. Uh, let me see, no, no, no. I thought there were, okay, don't, never mind, never mind. I will explain it. Uh, ah, this one, okay, mainland territory. If we shoot in mainland territory, in mainland territory, assuming exactly that we have a uh, 5 million euros. I mean, the same show that we were shooting in Canary Island in the above example, uh, the tax deduction and the cash pack you will obtain is uh, 1.3 million euros. That is not bad, but it's not as good as if we shoot in Canary Islands. So um, you, when you decide to come to Spain, uh, when you prepare your green light and your fin the financing of your film, uh, we have quite a lot of experience of helping in the finance to foreign producer. 
And sometimes when you do not have the budget, uh, if you try to prepare your, pro your shooting going to Canary Island or even both territory, you get it, okay? Because you can have quite uh, half of your budget back. I think that's very uh, interesting examples. Yeah, no, absolutely. Those are very interesting examples. And so uh, let's switch it over to Jose Manuel. Uh, you know, tell us a little bit about, again, you know, the way that Sequoia works within this structure, uh, if, you know, and how you would partner or provide production services for an American or international producer in, in some of these scenarios. Yes, we, we are working now in our case in Sequoia Studios, but it's a situation that uh, another funny big companies in the production and in the studios are doing. We here in Sequoia are working in, uh, in, in two ways. One of them is giving the service, the service to the international producer. Um, we, we have a business unit that uh, now has a leader that is Jorge uh, Maria that is one of the best Spanish producers, like producers. She has been working, for instance, Game of Thrones in the shooting theater in Spain. And we, in this area, are doing all the, all the managing of the, of the shooting. Mm -hmm. We are organizing the, 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 the actors, the travels, the technical equipment, the location. Uh, and also, we are uh, working in the accounting and the controlling of the project. And of course, in the in the management of the tax rebate, okay, mm -hmm. that is uh, one line of work. And in this moment, well, we we think that is a perfect uh, situation and a perfect moment for a lot of international producers in the United States, but also in Europe and in other uh, geographies to 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 be to, to be here, like. Uh, Teresa was saying in the first presentation, we have a wonderful shooting locations. And as, uh, as uh, Patricia was saying, we, uh, we have a lot of uh, tax incentives, and money, tax money for the for the producer. That is uh, one way. And the second the second way is interesting because uh, in some cases uh, we in Sequoia are seen as uh, some international producer are looking not only for the location and the production service but also are looking for a co-producer and in this area uh, we are working uh, looking for more money i think that uh, it's a it's a better situation for the tax monetization because uh, we can open the second alternative that uh, patricia was in the presentation that is uh, the Spanish tax credit and in this, uh, in this, uh, in, the, in that, in that credit, I think in most cases we can uh, we can have uh, more uh, uh, expenses to to credit to the to the tax, and in the in the end to have more money for the for the tax authorities, and in the second place, uh, well, we as a studio and a producer, we can help the international producer to look for distribution uh, here in Spain and uh, in another countries. We can uh, work for, present, uh, for, for presenting the, the project to broadcasters, to platforms here in Spain, to have uh, investors, uh, financial investors, not only tax investors, but also financial investors at, at risk to the, to the project. And also, in some cases, we can uh, help to the producer with uh, technical equipment. Uh, mm. For instance, in our case, uh, uh, Grupo Sequoia is not only Sequoia Studios, but also we have a big company providing uh, technical equipment like camera illumination, uh, post production, color, workflow color, uh, and editing uh, and sound. And also, we have a visual effect company. And in some cases, we can help the, the producer working on, on that areas and uh, contributing in, in kind in some items in some issues of the of the budget i think that is a uh, well uh, an interesting alternative for some uh, production that are looking not only the tax incentive and the location but also to have a to have a partner here in spain 
Yeah, sounds like an amazing partner to have from <laughs> considering all the scope of work that you do. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is our case, but uh, it, it not so, it not so, uh, sorry, it's, it's not only the situation of Sequoia Studios and Sequoia Group, but also there are another in, in very relevant producer in Spain that are working with the same approach and that and that have that uh, that uh, equipment and that have that uh, focus on attracting uh, big projects and international international projects. Yeah. Right. It's not only in our case. I think uh, in this moment, uh, all the Spanish uh, producers and studios are working very, very, very well and, of course, very hard to have uh, a lot of production here, not only uh, in house production and local production and IP from, uh, for us, but also giving this service to international producers. Yes, no, absolutely. Yeah, there's so much going on. And so I guess the next question, and I will throw this one back to uh, Teresa in terms of point of contact, right? So you're an international producer, an American producer. You're looking to meet folks like uh, Jose Manuel Sequoia. You're looking to hire an amazing firm like Anderson to handle all your tax credits. Uh, who's the first point of contact? Is it best to just contact you first and then you can kind of facilitate those relationships as part of the commission? Okay, thank you, Jose Luis. I should say uh, it's Spain Field Commission, <laughs> the, the, the first point of contact. We we will be really happy to help. We are, we are not a non-profit organization. Uh, we have two decades of exp experience uh, uh, filming uh, in Spain. Uh, in Spain Field Commission, we are a member of the International Network of Field Commissions, and we have agreements with professional associations uh, in Spain. And what we, uh, we do, our network throughout Spain, we, we provide the, the following. Uh, it's uh, an ongoing and customized support throughout each production stage for any kind of productions, not only big productions uh, for streaming, but also uh, smaller productions. We can uh, give, uh, provide access to experienced professionals uh, close to the location uh, that the production has chosen for, for filming. We, we give support to the location professionals and the service companies that you choose with our experience. We help with permits and paperwork in general. Um, also institutional backing for the project and, and commitment from the very first uh, moment and much more. And we, we are like an entry point in Spain, yes. And for more information, uh, you can look into our webpage that it's shooting in Spain.info and we will be really happy to help. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's exciting. And uh, so, you know, th this is so amazing. Like, and I think everyone in our audience wants to just get on a plane and go to Spain right now uh, and start setting up their productions. Uh, <laughs> but obviously, you know, we live in a world now where things have changed, especially over the last year. And I wanted to touch on the issue of uh, international productions and COVID-19. Uh, how are you guys approaching sort of the safety mechanisms and how accessible is Spain right now to outside producers? in terms of the uh, the protocols and if coronavirus I, and everything. If I can take this one, but I, I'm sure that uh, Jose Manuel will, will have some about these two. Uh, okay, shooting in Spain uh, is only stopped uh, for some weeks last year, uh, only uh, from March to May. And in May, we resume activity and we have been working non-stop in all the territory. It is true that very big productions uh, decided to uh, stop, but then then resume activity. And uh, for example, production from uh, for Amazon, from Netflix, and other uh, streamings, they have shot this year what uh, they have planned for last year. Mm. Uh, and now we, we, we are open to regular US flights. We are welcoming international productions. We have new sanitary uh, legal measures to make as the most competitive filming destination and yes we are working it is difficult but we 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 are really uh, in i think the the same level of activity we have before the covid crisis okay yeah yeah and also from our part jose luis mm. uh during the first month of the year we have been planning uh the investment of the of the shooting 
of the money coming to Spain and how to return the benefits to the foreign producer, to the American producer. And as Teresa says, we have no stop of shooting and to apply other tax benefits and to prepare everything with the tax, Spanish tax authority and with all the regulatory items we have in this moment. And we are taking very carefully of the of the cost uh, COVID cost and and we working very well and we in this moment I think we working too much. <laughs> <laughs> There's too much work. Okay, yeah. well, someone will jump jump in there. Yeah, that, that is a continuation of the of the affirmation of the Teresa and Patricia because in this moment I think that the the production here in Spain is full absolutely absolutely in full occupation. We have uh, well even some problems in, in some in some times to, 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 to find free stages to shoot and technical views uh, mm. all the people here in Spain, the, the local producers are uh, with a big great activity here uh, the original for the big the platforms are well the producers uh, before the pandemic and also well in the last uh, day, in the last uh, months and the, in the last week uh, we are seeing as international producers are coming here in, to Spain with big, uh, with big uh, production like uh, Universal in Navarra with uh, Vampire Academy or like uh, the new project of Wes Anderson here near Madrid in Chinchon. It's, I think it's a normal activity and of course from the producer point of view we are um, dedicating a lot of investment and a lot of uh, expenses to the usual control and protection measures like uh, uh, mask, uh, like uh, liquid, uh, hydroalcoholic uh, gel, and like uh, all the technical team and the medical team to be present in the shooting. We are doing uh, daily tests uh, here in Spain. Of course, in the shooting, all the people is keeping the distance in the in the shooting, and I think everything is going very, 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 very well in this in this, in this moment. And of course, as you know, as uh, most of the country is full vac vac vaccinated, and also uh, the numbers of the pandemic here in Spain are, are decreasing. I, I think it's a it's a good moment, and the and the worst situation was uh, as Teresa was saying in the first uh, in the first answer it, it, it was in March April May of uh, of, uh, of last year now I think we are um, in a good situation and for instance we in Sequoia this uh, the last year and this year we are uh, shooting four to five films and we are shooting a couple of TV series this year and in the next uh, next first month or the next year uh, we are producing another three TV series and in an scripted we now have more or less 20 programs that is a big activity and it is uh, the same situation uh, that have uh, another big companies like uh, I don't know Media Pro or Wendy Studios and all the Spanish and uh, small companies are producing one, two, two series per year, a couple of films per year. It's a, now I think it's a normal, almost normal, almost normal situation here. Mm, wow. So considering how busy you guys are, uh, how, how are you looking to grow? Because obviously it sounds like you need more crew, you need more stages, you need more, I don't know, everything. <laughs> so what is the plan to kind of continue to take advantage of this amazing momentum you have now and continue to grow your industry? Both from a crew level and from you know everything else. Yeah, exactly. oh, well, uh, I, 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 yeah, it's for you, Jose Manuel. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I, I was to say that uh, I think uh, well, in, I, I, I can't uh, I can't uh, tell the strategies of another company. I don't know, <laughs> but in our case, we are investing a lot in development. Uh, we are attracting a lot of uh, scripts and, and projects. We are working very, very hard in protecting our intellectual property, our IP. We want to work in productions 
that uh, with uh, IP for uh, Sequoia Studios and the co-producer uh, is our main focus. And another strategy that is, uh, I think, is the normal and the usual strategy now in the in the media, in the media industry, is that uh, most of our projects are have an international approach. We are working hard in projects with distribution and sales and partners in the Latin American countries, in the big countries in Mexico, Colombia, Chile, Peru, etc. And in the US Spanish market. That is our approach. Our main production for the next year are international production. And I think that is that is the approach. And of course we are uh, trying to attract uh, talent, talent, technic, uh, artistic and technical talent to our company. That is uh, that is our strategy. And working with uh, universities and working with uh, another companies to have uh, the best professionals and the best teaching for that professional. Hmm, that's a good point. And so talk a little bit too, and Teresa, I, yeah, go ahead and jump in. Yeah. I, I, know, I, I, will, I will just to add something to what the Jose Manuel has said that this, this year we have had very good news for this uh, need for growing that we have because the government of Spain has approved uh, an special plan called Spanish Audiovisual Hub that will foster filming in Spain even further. What we are doing, what the government is doing, is channeling important funds that are designed for recovering the country from COVID. They are channeling these funds into the audiovisual industry to allow the industry to grow. Mm. And uh, yes, we in Spain Film Commission, we, we are we have worked hard to make it possible. We are still working with them and we are really excited about this opportunity. Oh, wow. So so it's more like a public-private partnerships to help grow the industry yes. over. That's, that's amazing. That's exactly this. That's exactly yeah. this. And uh, yes, to point out Jose Luis, that we work for big uh, movies, but also for small ones. Because, for example, in uh, in our law firm, we work in from eight for films or movie of 18, 19 million euros but for two million euros also, because think about an American uh, film that wants to come and just have a financing from one euros, one million euros. If we shoot in Canary Island, you will have already the two million euros you need because mm. you finance in front with the bank, you have half of the film paid with the tax incentive. So from our part, we work in a lot for Chromecast, and Netflix, Amazon, uh, which be but also for independent uh the independent industry and smaller and non-scripted as well i mean mm -hmm. script and non-scripted movies because a non-scripted show in spain can qualify for the tax rebate so that is very interesting mm, yeah because then a lot of regions offer non-scripted that's that's a good point so that's that's an extra that's bonus it for all the non-scripted and reality show producers in the audience that want to go to Spain. That's a that's a great uh, angle as well. And I'm glad that you touched on the independent filmmakers. Um, so, and that's obviously important. You know, Teresa, you're at San Sebastian. You're, I'm sure you're seeing some amazing independent films there. Yeah. Uh, talk about your local independent film community and creative community there in Spain and how it kind of measures up with the international uh, filmmakers. Okay, uh, I think uh, in Spain there's a, a really long tradition of uh, creativity uh, uh, in the audiovisual industry. We have had really big names in the industry. Uh, one of the big names always in my mind is Buñuel because he is from my um, my land, from from Zaragoza. Uh, but now there are many many names that are top uh, in the in the creative. Uh, film industry like the Barmodova. Uh, mm. But uh, not only uh, there's uh, Spanish talent uh, and creativity in um, in the film industry, but also in the uh, television and series. One of the um, most uh, renowned uh, Spanish series is Money Heist. Money Heist right. now is a, a Netflix original, but at the beginning, 
it was a production of, the, of an independent company that uh, uh, that then uh, has grown into what money haste is today i mm. think uh, we have a lot a lot of uh, talent in our country and um, we uh, we have a talent that is used to to work with uh, the rest of europe and that uh, is used to work with uh, latin america too um, and yes we we think this is one of the um, key uh, factors that um, can make us uh, growth in the future because we have this talent in our country yeah, no, you absolutely do. And and I have to say that, you know, obviously, and you mentioned a couple of the great filmmakers and Almodovar, who is a, a huge fan favorite here in Miami uh, as well. I know uh, my partner, Patty Arias, in the early days of the Miami Film Festival, that Almodovar was a huge sensation here, uh, you know, when he started to showcase his work. And, and, a, and he's presenting a film now here in oh, South really? Asia. And wow. I'm looking through the window because I have just in front of me uh, uh, information about the film that is uh, called Competencia Oficial, uh, Competencia okay. Oficial and this is the, the film that Almodovar is presenting right now in, in San Sebastian. Oh, I love it. Teresa, you're like our local reporter at the San Sebastian Film Festival. <laughs> More or less. <laughs> <laughs> now Teresa live at San Sebastian. Well, we all yes. now you're just making us even more jealous to want to be over there. Uh, <laughs> but you're in Miami. You can't be jealous. Yes, I it's want not to bad. be in Miami. <laughs> yeah, we'll do an exchange. <laughs> yes, yes, please. Absolutely. Uh so yeah, let's let's have some fun and I know we want to jump to the QA, but you know, uh, and I know that you you already mentioned Teresa Buñuel, but so, what are some of your favorites? And I'll throw that to each of you, uh filmmakers or films or even shows like you know we mentioned money heist we talked about money heist yesterday actually as a huge global hit now uh with netflix but you know just personally talk about some of your favorite shows or films or filmmakers that that you like uh and i'll uh, i'll throw that first to jose manuel and, and then uh to patricia patricia <laughs> patricia you want to go first yeah <laughs> well, filmmakers well, uh, there is a director that is also a filmmaker, and not just Pedro Almodóvar, but now a Spanish one that I like it. And I, I've been working with him, that is Alex de la Iglesia, that he just finished 30 coins for HBO, and it has been really hard and, uh, um, and very interesting to do this series. Uh, and would like to point out also a very difficult film we did last year that was Maradona and because we combine um, uh, Italy in Spain with our line service in order to obtain all the tax benefit for all the countries and we work very close to the American producer I mean was really uh, really fantastic and uh, well uh, Quite a lot of well, my favorite one is uh, perhaps is not as famous as famous as that, but I love uh, Fernando Colomo. I mean, mm. I really love him <laughs> as a director, filmmaker. Um, uh, he's really intelligent, and he has a he's a really fantastic from my point of view. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Well, in my case, uh, besides the. The people working in the way studios. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's uh, like a, no, it's uh, the same. The same example that Teresa and Patricia says that well, obviously, Al Pedro Almodóvar, Luis Buñuel. Uh, I love, uh, for instance, uh, and for the American audience, I suggest to 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 look for uh, uh, Berlanga, uh, Luis García Berlanga, mm -hmm. that is fine. Fan. Spanish is a wonderful director, and Fernando Fernández Gómez, one of the best scriptwriters of the history, uh, not only in Spain, I think. <laughs> and well, in the last years, I mean, in the last month, uh, I have, uh, well, uh, I see the people that are working very, very well coming from the cinema to the TV platform, to the TV series, like uh, mm -hmm. Rodrigo Sorogoy. For instance, I love yeah. Rodrigo Sorogoyo. Uh, really last year, uh, we did uh, a TV series that was presented there, there in uh, San Sebastián, that is anti-disturbios. In my opinion, the best TV series last year in Spain. Rodrigo Sorogoyo is working, working very well, and uh, he was almost in win, win, winning a, a, an Oscar in Hollywood. We have right. 
shock, uh, yes. with a shock that his mother, mother is a, what, an incredible masterpiece, and he did a movie after that, that is a uh, mother. And I think it's very interesting. I mean, I, I think in, we, we can have an international approach and also because all the industry now is international. And I would say that is a personal, personal question. I, I love the work of Mexican directors like Alfonso Cuarón or mm. Yabitu. And in yeah. Europe, I think that we have a genius that is Paolo Sorrentino. That is. Oh, but, uh, all that, I, 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 am, I was going to mention this. I'm trying to go this afternoon after this uh, panel. I'm trying to go to a master class he's giving here in San Sebastian. Sorry. Yeah, oh, wow. And I love Not him. And also, I love Lantimos. Uh, and, but may I, I mentioned Buñuel, but uh, I would like also to mention this. Uh, fantastic uh, Spanish women directors. We have Isabel mm. Coixet, Paula Ortiz, Ithi Arboyain, that she's presenting yeah. here in San Sebastian to uh, Pilar Palomero. We have really a very uh, a wonderful group of uh, women uh, directors here in Spain and with a lot of future. Uh, yeah, yes. that's amazing. Yeah, it's great to hear. Wow, so that's that's exciting. There's a lot going on and, and so many creatives and so many interesting things. We only have time for like a couple questions. So I just wanna grab a couple of quick ones for you guys from the audience. Uh, Joe writes, what is the best central location to gather additional information on tax incentives and or other financial in-kind assistance possibilities for TV or features? Um, Me, Anderson. There you go. <laughs> All about, yes, I think that was very obvious by your presentation. You are the most knowledgeable yeah. source. <laughs> for, so we'll get, we'll have to set up a private meeting. No, we yeah, really I think uh, when it when it comes to when it comes to tax counselor counseling, I have to say that Anderson is our tax counselor uh, for Spain Field Commission. Um, of course, if they need a first step of information, of course we can contact us. But we also always say that for tax rebates, it's important to have a good counselor and a specialized counselor. Okay. Yeah, yes. so there you go. No, we, great, great. Uh, yeah, go ahead. That, that we have uh, in Square Studios are working with Anderson too, and they are wonderful people. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, because, yeah, to obtain, as you have seen in the presentation, to obtain the tax rebate, we have to follow uh, a lot of uh, regulatory requirements that are quite difficult, and we have to prepare the film in order to be sure that we will obtain the cash back. Right, absolutely. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, one more question here. Uh, this one here is from Alfredo. Uh, as a co-production, would a crossover film on Nobel Prize winner Juan Ramon Jimenez, who lived in the US and PR, uh, be an interesting project for, uh, for Spain? Why not? <laughs> no. I think it'd be great. So there you go, Alfredo. Give it a shot. I have to say that we are open to all kind of uh, projects. We, we, we are now with, uh, I don't know, probably 20 projects per week. And, and we are studying all the interesting proportions of the people. Of all the talent, the skilled writers and producers are trying to get a movie financed. And of course, we, here we are uh, absolutely open to any, to any conversation. Yeah. Yes, and I love how open you are. That's why we always say Spain is tapas of mind. Uh, and you've been yeah. an amazing panel today. And thank you all so much for your time and your talents and sharing it with our audience today. Thank you. Thank you for you. Yes. Thank you yes. very much, and thank you very much for the invitation, and thank you very much, everybody. I hope you enjoy with our our, our words. Absolutely, and hope to see you in Miami soon as well. Oh yes, please. <laughs> we hope so. We hope so. <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> All right, everyone. Yes, uh, please, please, please. But in Miami. Thank you. In Miami, not not virtually. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, to our audience, we're going to take a quick fifteen-minute break, a very short break. And we'll be back uh, with another panel. So please stay tuned uh, for the next session, which is gonna be awesome. Uh, I believe it is our legal panel. What's the deal? So get ready for that. 
And uh, thank you again to our panelists and we'll see you soon.